Welcome my friends to the final part. Congratulations to everyone who got this far. In the previous part we did some tedious roping. In this part we will be making some crates and wine barrels and a fishing net. First of all let's make the crate. Shift A and add mesh. Add in a cube. This is the primitive object which most resembles our crate. Select this top face. G, Z and move it down. Press S and then Shift Z to scale it only on the X and Y axis and not on the Z since it's already good on Z. Control R and move your mouse wheel forward to add two loop cuts. Hit S then Y to move this loop cuts towards the edge of our grid. Add two horizontal loop cuts. S, Z, move them apart. Hit 3 on the keyboard and click on all these middle faces. I want to extrude them inwards. Currently, if I press E and try to extrude, you can see that it's clearly not my dream. Hit F3 and search for extrude faces along normals. This way, we can extrude each face inwards. Hit P and separate them by selection. Now, I want to turn all these flat faces into planks. As usual, we need more geometry. Control R and move your mouse wheel forward to increase the amount. Now, we need to select all these new edges and bevel them. It would be really tedious and time consuming if we just select each of the edges and one by one. So, why not use an easier approach? Select one edge, shift G and click on length to select all the edges of similar length as the one we selected. Deselect the outer edges. Control B to bevel them. This will add one extra edge to the ones we selected. Hit X and select faces to delete all the faces that we are selecting right now in between the edges. Now add in a solidify modifier to add some thickness. Make sure to check even thickness. Apply the modifier. Select these two parts of our crate. Press Ctrl J to join them. And there we are. Our crate is down. Now let's place it in a sensible spot. Duplicate it. Rotate it slightly. Duplicate it again. And duplicate this. Place it at the top of these crates. Maybe rotate it. Select all these three crates. Duplicate. Place them right under the shelter that we made earlier. Perfect. Now let's make the fishing net. I want to place the net on these crates so it looks like the fisherman threw it onto the crates randomly. To make the fishing net, first we need to understand how it works, how its physics work, what happens to it when it falls on something. Turns out that it works exactly like cloth. Luckily, Blender comes with a powerful cloth simulator which we can easily use in this situation. Shift A and add in a plane. Scale it and, and place it in the air on the top of these crates. Apply the scale, otherwise the cloth simulation might not work. Currently you can see that the plane is made up of only one face and it has no geometry. If we want this plane to be deformed like a real cloth, we must add some geometry. As usual, control or move your mouse wheel forward to increase the cuts. Do the same right here. Make sure to make squares geometry. Click on this icon. This tab is known as the physics tab. So while selecting the plane, click on the cloth. And the plane disappears. This is because we are on a different frame, my friends. Click this to go to the first frame. Now if I press space to play the animation, you can see that our plane falls down, ignoring the crates. Select one of the crates and in the physics tab, click on collision. Now the plane will collide with the crates. You can see that now it only collides with the top crate. Add the collision modifier to anything which the plane may touch during the animation.
play the animation. Stop the animation as soon as you are happy with the look of the plane. Go to the modifiers tab and apply the cloud. Now if I play the animation, nothing seems to happen as the effect is applied now. And to make it look like a net, add in a wireframe modifier. Damn, that looks ultra realistic. Now let's make the wine barrel. First, look for the object which most resembles the barrel. It's a cylinder. So if I click Ctrl R, then you see this yellow thing appearing. This asks you where you want to put the, the loop cut. I don't want to loop one loop cut, but if I rotate my mouse wheel forward, then it increases the count. I only need two loop cuts. Right click and then you can see the loop cuts appearing. So if I hold down Alt and click on the loop cut, then I can select the whole loop cut. Then if I hold down Alt and then at the same time hold down Shift and then click on the another loop cut, then I can select both the loop cuts. Right now I am in vertex select mode so I will press 2 on the keyboard when I am in edge select mode. You make sure that you are in edge select mode before clicking on the loop cuts, before doing the stuff. Okay, so hold down Alt, click on this loop cut, then Alt and then Shift and click on this one. Now if I press S on the keyboard then I can scale it as you can see. I will scale it out just a little bit, just like that. Now you can see that it already looks a bit like a barrel. Okay, now if I press Ctrl B on the keyboard, then I can add more geometry, which is also called beveling. Now if I move my mouse wheel forward, then I can add more loop cuts. I'm happy with these four. Now, as you may have seen in medieval barrels, we need a metal frame around our barrel. We need one ring right here, one ring right here, one here and one right here. So Control R, I will need one right here. Now let's do the same at the bottom right here. Add a loop cut. Add one right here. This would be our ring. One right here. Now if I go to face select mode by pressing 3 on the keyboard or you can just click right here. This is the face select mode. Then I can select faces. But I want this whole arrow, this whole row of faces. So if I hold down Alt and click on this face, then I select it. As you can see, do the same right here, by, but make sure to hold down Shift as well. So Alt, Shift and then I'll click on this one. Oops, Control Z, click here. Oops, damn, click, damn, click right here. And then I'll do the same right here. Now you can see, we can see the rings, but they're still connected with our barrel. Now we need to separate these rings into a new mesh. So first shift D and duplicate it. Right click to clear its movement. Then to separate them just press P and then select selection. Now it's a separate mesh as you can see. But our barrel still remains the same. Now select the barrel and then go into edit mode again. In face make sure you're in first select mode and select this top face this bottom face by holding down shift then P and select selection to separate these two faces as well okay now select the barrel and press shift H on the keyboard this will hide everything except our barrel now we could select them one by one but there's an easier way if I go into front view then press Z on the keyboard and go into wireframe now we can use these edges to select the whole loop cuts and then here in select loops Click on edge loops, press Ctrl B, as you can see, it's adding two more loop cuts, but I just need one. Rotate the mouse wheel backwards, just like that. Now X and select faces, and it will delete all the faces, all the selected faces. Now as you can see that this barrel is ridiculously thin so select it and go click on this wrench icon to go to the modifier tab now add in a solidify modifier this modifier adds thickness to the to an object here if you tweak this value if you increase this value you can see what it's doing how is that once you're happy with the value just apply it apply all right now if i press alt and then edge then it reveals all that we had hidden now this one is ridiculously thin as well so 
I will need a solidify modifier. Now as you can see that nothing seems to happen, well this is because of the offset. It is minus 1, negative 1, so make sure it is on positive 1. Now you can see. Under normals, if I click on auto smooth, then how is that? It looks like metal already. Ok, so now I want lids to be made up of planks as well. Currently if I try to add Lucas to the circle, it's not possible. So let's add a plane. But first, we will need the plane to be made to be in the exact position as the circle. We need to place the 3D cursor on and the origin point where the circle is. To do that, select the circles and go to edit mode. Select this circle, shift S and choose cursor to select it. Add some loop cuts to the plane. Now select the circles first and then select the plane while holding shift. When both the meshes are selected, press tab to go into edit mode with both the objects. Hit A to select everything. Go to mesh and choose knife product. Select all the faces outside the circle. X and delete them. Select all these objects and press Ctrl J to join them. Make sure all the modifiers are applied first before joining them. And here we are with our realistic looking wine barrel. Place it in a sensible spot. When you are done, delete the Prince Charming because we no longer need him as the modeling is finally done. If you got this far and made this final 3D model, I congratulate you for making your own original 3D model. Anyways, recently I added a poll in which you can vote for the next tutorial as the series has finally ended now. And also make sure to rate the tutorial series in the community section as well so that I may know what is wrong with it. You can comment what is wrong with it and I will fix that in the future.